So, a named boundary, all it really is, is just, like the name implies, a boundary, but it is associated with a saved view. Uh, and you, with this, you can create your drawing and sheet models. So in the background here, I, can, I have a few pictures showing some of the things I'll be demonstrating later in Open Roads Designer. We'll go through this in a live demo. Uh, the first one on the left will be the actual name boundary tool. And then the one in the middle is the name boundary dialog. You get to manage the name boundaries that you've created here. And then the right one is the actual saved views dialog. So, and instead of the reason we liked the name boundaries is because instead of manually creating multiple saved views, you can use name boundaries to help automate the process. Uh, it'll create multiple saved views for multiple name boundaries that get created. So let's go ahead and jump over into Open Roads. I'll go ahead and start sharing my screen. All right. So I have a very simple file here. I have a terrain alignments and corridor so let's go ahead and jump into the name boundary tool we'll go to open roads modeling workflow drawing production tab and name boundary i'll start here with civil plan so the first thing you may notice with this dialog is that we get all these different options it may seem like a lot thrown at you with minimal guidance, but I, I would just like to point out a couple of things that will help get us started. The first thing is you can choose what kind of name boundary you're creating here at the top. And what you select here affects what options are available down below. The three I will be focusing on for this presentation are plan, profile, and cross section. The second thing I wanna point out is down here in the bottom left corner. There are props or prompts that show up down here to let you know what the program needs from you. So you'll see right now it is telling us to identify a path element. This is just going to be my horizontal alignment. So I will go ahead and select it. Once you do that, you'll notice that a white line appears where your cursor is. If we looked at the next prompt, it is telling me to identify a start point. And you'll also see in the dialog up here that the start location is changing with my cursor. You can use your cursor in the design space to select a location, or you can go ahead and type in a specific station in the dialog. I'll go ahead and type one in. I'll just start it at the beginning. So it placed the starting name boundary there, and it is now asking for an endpoint. This is exactly the same as the start, where you can use the cursor or the dialog box. I'm going to use the dialog box again, but this time I'm going to use this little button next to it instead of typing. This button will automatically lock to the end of the alignment, just like that. And the button above it uh, does something very similar, but it just it's the opposite. It locks the start location to the beginning. All right, so now you'll see that we have all these name boundaries show up whenever our cursor is hovering in the design space. So now it's time to tweak the remaining settings. And I'll go ahead and name the name boundaries. We'll just go with test. I don't particularly care about a description here, so I'll just name it example. And we don't have any existing name boundary groups in our DGN. Since this is brand new and we've not done any kind of drawing production, anything in it yet. So I'll just keep it on new and then give it, I'll keep test here. The rest of the options are for tweaking how the name boundaries are sized and positioned. I'll keep it simple, but I'm also going to make sure that we have multiple name boundaries. 
if I wanted this entire length, could be one name boundary, but most likely wouldn't fit appropriately on the sheet with current settings. I actually am going to change the length of each name boundary, just so we have a little bit less. There we go. We'll stick with five. All right. And now we'll kind of go over, like I said earlier, the options that show up down here will change based off which option you're using up here. And I'll kind of go over those as we come up to them. So overlap, uh, it's just the length of the overlap between consecutive boundaries. So I could change this to, you know, 50 or something like that. And you'll notice that these name boundaries here are now overlapping. But for this demonstration, I'll go ahead and keep it at zero. Boundary chords, that's just the number of chords for the stroking boundary in a curve. So I could change it to two to really emphasize what all it does. And you'll see here the name boundaries appear less smooth on curves. But if I change it back to 20, it's a lot smoother. All right, last thing, I'm going to keep the Create Drawing dialog box unchecked for now. And I'll explain this as I do my profile name boundaries next. And last, and I'll go over this later also, I'm going to choose plan profile plan for the drawing seed. We'll go over more about this later. I will need to change this back to all right. I'll go ahead and confirm those by data pointing in the plan view. And now we will go through the same steps, but with profile. So I'll go ahead and select my drawing seat again. And again, I'll go over this a little bit more later. You can go ahead and do name, description, everything. I'll keep these as is for now. The main points I want to look at are the method here, elevation datum spacing, station data spacing, profile shifts, and again, what happens when you use this create drawing checkbox. So let's start with the method. I'm going to keep it from plan group, but you could manually choose the station limits just like we did with plan. But since we've already done those station limits with the plan group we've created, we can just use this to create the profile name boundaries. Can I'll keep the name and description the same. Vertical exaggeration, most people should be familiar with this. Uh, elevation datum spacing will be the elevation axis label spacing. And the station datum spacing is much the same, but just the offset axis label spacing. Profile shifts is the horizontal location that you get to, you get to choose the horizontal location for profile shifts. You have these options here. I'm going to keep it at datum stations. And now I'm OK with everything we have. Let me go ahead and pull up the actual profile so everyone can see what we're working with. All right, I'll go ahead and turn the Create Drawing checkbox on, too. So down here, we got our prompts. Identify profile view. Go ahead and select my active profile. And we got a bunch of name boundaries along it, and they line up with our plan group name boundaries. Now, I don't think I need all this height on here, so I will go ahead and change this to something smaller. I'm much more OK with that. So I'll go ahead and accept by data point in the profile view. And this is what shows up when you have that create drawing checkbox checked. So over here, since I have chosen plan and profile, I'm doing them together. We have this side for plan and this side for profile. Now I'm OK with everything selected here. You feel free to make tweaks yourself whenever you're going through this process. 
but since I'm okay with everything here, I'll go ahead and hit OK. And now you'll see Open Roads is generating these sheets and drawing models. All right, now I will swap to, let's swap to the plan, first plan drawing. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.